עכשיו אני מתכבדת להזמין אל הבמה לראיון אחד על אחד על היחסים האסטרטגיים בין אזרבייג'אן לישראל. And our special guest in this session is His Excellency Fariz Razayev, who is Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Azerbaijan. At the reunion, he came, Dr. Arad Nir, Orech Chachot Achutz. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, we don't have much time, uh, Mr. Zayev, so I think we just uh, start without any introduction. So, uh, welcome to Israel. Baruch Abali Israel, Israel de Hosh Gel Deniz, and thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure and honor, Todaraba. It's a pleasure and honor to be in your company this morning uh, in the great state of Israel, in the uh, Reichman University, which is a cradle of research, academia, and development. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Rezaev. Uh, diplomatic relationship between uh, Israel and uh, Azerbaijan were established in 1993. In August that year, an Israeli embassy was opened in Baku, and a handful of Israeli ambassadors were coming and going uh, ever since. The first Azerbaijani ambassador arrived here in this country only this year. Mukhtar Mamadov is here, presented his credentials to President Herzog two months ago. Why did it take you 30 years? Um, in Azerbaijan, we believe in the ancient uh, Jewish concept of para para. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one, but still, uh, President, <laughs> you deserve that. We'll see what happens next. <laughs> President, President Aliyev uh, used to say for many years that, uh, quoted as saying that the relationship between uh, Azerbaijan and Israeli in Israel are li like an iceberg. The, you see only the tip, but the bulk is uh, underneath the water. So something did happen. What para did you catch in order to bring the bulk or part of the bulk on top of the waters? I don't think you hear him. Okay, take it. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, for 30 years, we weren't sitting on our hands. A lot of things were happening. Uh, there was a growing uh, economy, energy, and trade relationship. Uh, there were direct flights between Israel and Azerbaijan. Um, there were uh, very senior high-level visits, including at the level of ministers, prime ministers, and presidents. Uh, President Shimon Peres spoke at the uh, ADA University in Azerbaijan, and I uh, had the honor of asking him a question and signing a book uh, by him, uh, among other things. So um, this was not a vacuum, right? This was not a pause that we were waiting for, and then for some certain reasons we woke up and said, oh my God, we need to uh, open up an embassy. Uh, we need to do a preparation. We need to do a homework. 30 years of preparation, it's a long time. Well, again, uh, you want it soon or you want it good? <laughs> Both. How crucial was the rapprochement between the recent rapprochement between uh, Turkey and Israel to your decision uh, to open the embassy and to step forward with the relationship? Both countries are true, old, strong, and reliable friends of Azerbaijan. So whenever there are rumors or gossip of disagreement or conflict of opinion between our two friends, that make us sad and we did everything we could to help them to find common language and to come to an understanding which is good for the region, which is good for Azerbaijan, which is good for strategic, strategic stability, economic development, and regional cooperation. These two countries are also two main uh, partners in security matters, suppliers of security equipment, of military equipment to your country, isn't that? So, 
among other countries, yes. How crucial was uh, Israeli assistance to you during the recent Karabakh uh, war uh, to step forward? It was very crucial, but here I mostly speak not about the hardware, not about uh, various uh, tools and instruments of war, but the um, innovative Israeli way of thinking, the way of overcoming problems, the way of turning problems into solutions, the uh, indirect approach, innovations, startups, and uh, everything related to this. And uh, there are many pillars, as you uh, just mentioned, to the uh, bilateral relationship between uh, our two countries. Uh, the security issue, uh, security cooperation, is one of the biggest pillars uh, uh, in that matter. Uh, there are many rumors about the sum, how much uh, 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 Azerbaijan is investing in uh, Israeli equipment and Israeli cooperation, uh, uh, economical-wise. Can you estimate that number? Well, Israel, um, Azerbaijan has been and is still uh, a very important factor in providing for Israel's energy security. Let's start with that. Yeah, um, the third uh, of our about third of our, of yeah. our oil for security fuel, needs, yeah, yes, and everything uh, that is crucial, of course. And we understand the importance and relevance of energy security these days, when um, a lot of supplies, um, a lot of deals got disrupted, cancelled uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, sanctions, embargoes, and so on. Uh, the trade is booming; um, it's growing. The numbers are good but we'll take them even higher because there are many similarities between Azerbaijan and Israel in terms of uh, nature, in terms of landscape, in terms of the challenges we're facing. Uh, both our countries have uh, problems with uh, natural water sources and we know that Israel is a global champion in water recycling and uh, water management. So uh, there is a huge project uh, under development in Azerbaijan. Now we are at the feasibility study and research and development phase. It has to do with the desalination of the Caspian Sea water and uh, Israel is a natural partner. Um, when I hear the phrase uh, which describes, which tries to praise the relations between Azerbaijan and Israel, saying that the sky is the limit, I have to uh, strongly but respectfully disagree because uh, between Azerbaijan and Israel, we are talking about cooperation in space. So the sky is no longer the limit. And uh, military and uh, security uh, part of this cooperation? How, how important it is to you and uh, how large is it in uh, currency uh, terms? It is important because we want to learn uh, from the best. We want to buy the best and we want to cooperate the best. And, uh, and you're willing to pay the best? <laughs> um, again, I don't think that uh, it would have been otherwise. Iran, with whom uh, you share hundreds uh, uh, of uh, kilometers long border, was a factor in withholding the uh, relationship with Israel or opening an embassy here in Israel? Azerbaijan is a sovereign country, and we're proud to have sovereign domestic and foreign policy. We are uh, masters of our uh, own fate, and we uh, brilliantly confirmed and demonstrated it. Uh, in 2020 with the victory in the Second Karabakh War. Uh, the victory, the liberation of Azerbaijan's territories from long-term uh, Armenian occupation was an important factor. Um, it changed the strategic context in the region, it changed the situation, and it changed the uh, perception of many things. Yet it seems that the Iranians did not spare effort to express the dismay of your move towards Israel, starting in uh, your embassy in Tehran, this uh, attack over there, which cost the life of one of the personnel there, and you taking off, the, bringing back the uh, staff back home. Also, there was an assassination attempt uh, to one of your uh, parliament members who was for this move to, to Israel. It wasn't a mere coincidence, was it? Well, uh, my president spoke at length uh, about the incidents you mentioned too. Uh, there's been a certain background and certain development around this process. 
The only thing that we always wanted to have with Iran is a, a mutually respectful uh, dialogue of equals, because we are neighbors. We're destined to live uh, next to each other. Uh, neither country is going to move to moon uh, in the um, near future. Um, so we were trying always to focus the energy and the uh, encouragement on both sides into positive things, things like cross-border trade, um, transit, and so on and so forth. There might be political and foreign policy disagreements between neighbors, that happens. There are many uh, examples around the world. But in Azerbaijan, we are proud to pursue a fully sovereign foreign policy, period. Is there a full-stuffed Azeri embassy in Tehran at the moment? No, it's not. So can you elaborate on that? Well, that's, um, that's not a normal relationship between the neighbors, is it? Um, our relations, unfortunately, at a very down, at a very low point uh, in the history of bilateral relations. There's been a terrorist attack against embassy in January. We have a lot of questions to the origin of that attack, to the background, and to the process how it was developing for um, almost an hour. An armed terrorist was uh, trying to, uh, you know, spray bullets all over the uh, building. Uh, and the uh, fact is that this building houses not only the diplomatic office, but also the uh, residential quarters. So are there, there, are women there conditions? And children. Did, you, did you set conditions for the embassy staff to return to Tehran? The embassy was evacuated the next day because we felt no longer safe and secure for uh, our people, and we could no longer keep them in these conditions. There is uh, a dialogue, a conversation between the two countries. We are insisting on a fair and transparent investigation. Uh, there are a lot of questions that must be uh, answered uh, in order to um, understand what happened, why it happened, and to prevent it from repetition. You are not only neighbors to Iran, you also share the same religion, both uh, Azerbaijan is by religion mainly Shia, like Iran, and many millions of Azeris of or, or, or origin people live in, in, in Iran. And, and yet it seems that uh, Iran did not manage to uh, succeed in trying to uh, impose or to export the Islamic revolution to Azerbaijan. So would you say that uh, Azerbaijan is a proof of failure of Iran's doctrine of exporting this uh, Islamic revolution? Azerbaijan is a proof of the fact that you can be a small country, landlocked, surrounded by um, many large neighbors which do not necessarily share always your agenda and vision, and yet you can remain independent sovereign, uh, successful, and you can develop very good relations with uh, countries you deem to be your friends, including the state of Israel. Well, there's no doubt that Iran tries, tried and still tries to meddle in, in, in Azerbaijan. So uh, how do you manage uh, to withstand that? Maybe you can share this recipe with us. Azerbaijan is a secular state. Yes, the majority of population are Muslim, uh, and by the way, not the majority of them are Shia, but the balance is about 60 to 40, um, or 50 to 50, there are various estimates. But um, we strongly oppose the introduction of religion or religious extremism into international relations and into foreign policy. We think that um, all countries, all uh, states are equal, and the neighbors must develop relations according to the principles of the good neighborhood. Otherwise, we'll be mired in uh, you know, constant problems. Well, you are not sharing the recipe with me, so uh, let's try and proceed. Israel has many concerns uh, regarding Iran, but our main concern is Iran's nuclear program. Do you share this concern? We believe that the international politics, the global situation, has more than enough challenges and problems. And to introduce the subjects, to introduce the problems which would aggravate the situation is not exactly good for the uh, fate of our planet. Um, Azerbaijan always spoke 
and will always be speaking for, the maintenance of international stability, peace, security, based upon the norms and principles of international law. There are ways and uh, means to handle the um, debatable or questionable problems, especially relate or including related to the nuclear program. There was an attempt in 2015. There are questions on how efficient and relevant that was. But we believe in uh, diplomacy. We believe in the dialogue. We believe in constant attempts to find innovative solutions to the problems which might seem intractable. So you don't believe in these threats that are being heard by Israelis that uh, Iran will be stopped from having a nuclear weapon in whatever means it will take? We believe that international law contains a very important principle which uh, does not uh, advise or recommend countries to use force or threat force against each other. And we believe that all countries in the region, including the State of Israel, has an inalienable natural right to live in peace and security. So uh, if we will feel threatened to an extent that we cannot allow Iran to go ahead, will Azerbaijan uh, enable Israel to use its territory to act against Iran? Hypothetically speaking, of course. You know, one of the... Um, most important elements of Azerbaijan's foreign policy is that we refrain from interfering into other countries' internal affairs, and we refrain from interfering the uh, disputes or problems, um, including by allowing or giving our territory um, for some operations or adventures. We try to contribute into international peace and security by uh, more positive more constructive means. So was it wrong for President uh, Trump to step down from the JCPOA? I don't think that I'm in a position to uh, question or comment the um, decisions by the US president, including by former ones. No, but from uh, Azeri interests, regional interests, uh, you uh, say that you want diplomacy, you want uh, cooperation, uh, this is what uh, you stand for, even with uh, rival neighbors. So uh, what's now? What's next? Well, I don't know what's next. I don't have a glass or, or crystal ball, uh, as they say. According we to your information, sorry, wha 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 what is the state of Iran's nuclear program at the moment? What information Azerbaijan has regarding it? Oh, you will have to uh, address that question to my colleagues in the uh, special services, if they will be able to handle it. Uh, but coming back to the question about the uh, uh, great power politics, we believe that the world would be a more better and safer place if the great powers would refrain from continuous use of the double standards and selective practices. And using the principle, uh, what mine is mine and what yours is negotiable. Okay, that's, uh, <laughs> that's quite clear. Having said that, uh, your relationship, your current relationship with Russia uh, seems to be a bit complicated. For, on, on the one hand, uh, Russia is uh, hosting uh, peace negotiations between you and uh, Armenia. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Russia is, is, is nourishing an, a, a new formed alliance with Iran. Are you concerned by that? Did this cause you concern? Well, being concerned and living in a complicated situation is uh, our full-time job. <laughs> Again, we are landlocked, we are small, uh, we are surrounded by big countries with their agendas, politics and views, and yet we manage to remain independent, sovereign and successful. Uh, probably there are reasons for that. Maybe we manage to find common language uh, with the neighbors, at least those who are with uh, willing with, with those who are willing to listen. Armenia was a very sad and unfortunate exception because this was the only country which put forward, after Azerbaijan became independent and even slightly before, which put forward territorial claims against my country, which questioned my country's territorial integrity, and which uh, invaded my country, occupied the 20% of our territory and displaced a million of our citizens. For 28 years we tried, we did everything we could to find a peaceful solution. 
we reached the limits of diplomatic and I would say human uh, flexibility and imagination to come up with various models and scenarios. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and this is how we arrived, this is how we reached the stage of the second war. But that now, was uh, not our choice, after, after it was imposed on us. After this war, now again, now, nowadays it seems there's an optimism for solution, for peaceful solution. There is a cautious optimism. Uh, for two and a half years, which passed after the end of the war, uh, from day one, we've tried to uh, approach our Armenian neighbors with what we call the peace agenda. And we suggested to them the normalization on two tracks, political and economic. Political involves uh, peace treaty, delimitation of borders, establishment of diplomatic relations. And economic involves, first of all, the reopening of direct land communications between the two countries. Regretfully, for two and a half years, Armenia refused to play ball and was dragging the talks. But now we seem to be more optimistic because Armenians seem to be finally reaching the point that there is no alternative to peace agenda and it must be based on mutual recognition of territorial integrities. After this uh, war, I cannot forget the footage that came uh, through the uh, various agencies and in the uh, social media of uh, Israeli and Turkish flags next to each other in various places in Karabakh and in Azerbaijan and, 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 all, and all over the country. Now, uh, how crucial was uh, President Aliyev in the rapprochement between Israel and Turkey? Well, speaking of flags, you forgot to mention uh, the third flag, which was uh, uh, proudly displayed among uh, those, and it was the flag of Pakistan. And you don't uh, frequently see flags of Israel and Pakistan flying That's true. Yep. next to each other, and it was Azerbaijan who brought those flags together. Again, tells you something about our country. Uh, the vision of uh, President Aliyev is crucial in all the dimensions of our domestic and foreign policy. The vision of President Aliyev is to turn Azerbaijan into the hub in the South Caucasus, in the place of cooperation, not confrontation, in the bridge and arena for dialogue, not hatred, not mutual accusations. And we are building up upon our uh, history, including the uh, Jewish history in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is proud that we never had anti-Semitism in our country and will never have. We'll now, never have. Uh, President Erdogan, <laughs> We are about to uh, sojourn, so President Erdogan is heading now uh, to uh, another victory in the uh, second round of elections in Turkey. There are mixed feelings about him here in Israel. Can you calm us down? Um, I think I can. Um, President Erdogan is a, a leader of the world scale. Um, he is a mature, um, person who thinks in terms of strategy, who thinks in terms of uh, long-term development. And the sustainability and continuation in uh, Turkey's domestic and foreign policy is, in our understanding, quite a positive thing uh, for the region. Uh, Turkey played a strategic role in development of regional cooperation in the South Caucasus. We used their help very much to reopen the region for the world, including for our friends and partners in Israel. Uh, let's not forget that the major oil and gas pipelines starting in Azerbaijan, they end up in uh, Turkey. And uh, uh, the only railway which reconnected South Caucasus to Europe also runs through Turkey. One last question. Uh, now, after there's uh, an Azerbaijani uh, ambassador here opening uh, uh, an embassy, part of this iceberg has floated on top of the water. Uh, are we to expect Azerbaijan to be more pro-Israel in uh, voting in international organizations, such as the UN, uh, uh, various institutions? Um, again, I can give you a very long diplomatic answer, but uh, perhaps let's finish our conversation with the phrase I started it, para para. Well, I thank you so much, Mr. Fariz Zayev, for this conversation, who was uh, inspiring and uh, definitely diplomatic. Thank you so much. Thank you.